Afro uh, to uh, Peter. Peter Francis Jubin, pronounced Jubin, is an author, lecturer on spirituality and consciousness. His first book, Consciousness is All, has helped thousands of readers around the world to find their true nature as the infinite self. Leading to greater happiness and freedom, Peter's second book, Simply Notice Clear Awareness is the Key to Happiness, Love, and Freedom, was written to make the deeper points of awareness and spirituality more accessible to the public. He currently does consultations, life coaching on a one-to-one -one basis, or in small groups via living room workshop teleconference calls. Um, so we have um, Peter here. So do not adjust your screen. What you're seeing is is uh, what it is. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm here. Hi Peter. <laughs> hey Emerson. How are you doing? Good, uh, very well, thank you. Nice to see you. There's a there's a method to the madness here. Nice to see you here. Into, yeah, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Peter. I'm going to to mute myself. Um, okay. Feel free to start anytime. Okay. Hi guys, everyone. Uh, your camera's functioning fine. Hopefully you can see that there. There's obviously no body in front of the camera. And uh, well, this is a nothing conference and they wanted nothing speakers, so here you go. You got one. Um, actually, the, I, this idea came just the other day for doing the talk this way. This is intentional. And, you know, it's a fun idea, just something different, obviously. And uh, it's a way of breaking the pattern a little bit. And right now, let's just take a moment and be present and still. And just, and by the way, there's a beautiful, peaceful atmosphere. Thank you for that nothing conference. And everyone participating. But now notice if, I have to say it this way, with you, there might be a little bit less of a feeling of attachment of some type, any type, because there's no body sitting in a chair in front of that camera to whom this talk, this essence, these, these words can be attached. It just feels more open. So, you know, naturally we have to do this stuff and attach names to bodies and things to bodies all day long just to function in the world. But every now and then it's nice to take a little vacation from that and let, let this be that. And it, it's, it, it's not the you know, the gimmickiness of it, the novelty-ness, novelty of it, but just this, ah, oh, yes, a little bit less attachment here, just more, more openness, flip side. And, <clears throat> excuse me, a way to if you want to say think of this, or to just give it a little perspective, would be that for what's going to happen in this next hour we have together, including the question and answers, which we'll do at the end, um, think of this as the voice of awareness talking, or the voice of consciousness, because frankly, that's what it really is. It's, it's not thanks to any person that any of this non-dual speak can be uttered, it's thanks to the presence of awareness entirely. It's the one being aware. And so maybe this is a little bit more in keeping with the nature of awareness, which is formless. But just as if everything is sort of being said and listened to, by the way, thanks to the voice of awareness or the, the hearingness of awareness, bodiless, incorporeal awareness. It's locationless. It's coming from that placeless place, can't be pinned down. And 
This brings up another point, which is one can ask, okay, where is this nothing conference being participated in? One is participating in it. Where is it being, where is the participation happening? And again, because we tend to be so often body conscious, body related, body driven, the tendency is to, just because of conditioning, is for there to be this, and it's it's usually often doesn't come up on the radar. It just happens, so you're not really conscious of it. But it's that, oh, I'm participating in this conference from a place, from a geographical place, from somewhere in the US, somewhere in Europe, somewhere in Asia, wherever. Doesn't matter, but it's got that location, geographical location. And what if all that is let go of in, in light of sort of taking the perspective of awareness, which it is doing, and you may be doing this already, which is wonderful, I just wanted to mention it. But what else could be said? Okay, it's as they say, the placeless place can't be localized or localized anywhere, even except, for, except maybe for the sound of these words. But what else could be said? Isn't whatever this indescribable unknowableness is, isn't it at least definitely present? You know, it's not a where, anywhere, but it's present because if it were not, there'd be no awareness of anything happening at the moment, of even being. And just sort of rest back into, without thinking about it, but just feel the, be alive as the definiteness of this right now. The certainty. And it's not the kind of certainty that has to be reasoned about, thought through. Well, if you're this step A, this step B, it's just, it's certain prior to thought, whether thought happens or not. And it's really the one that is holding this conference is Certainty, it's the certainty itself. It doesn't, this is not a conference that's taking place in the mind, in the intellect. And it's just certainty, the, the freedom of certainty without having to think or reason through. And is it not ever present? Ever now? It hasn't arrived at its certainty from somewhere else because it isn't anywhere else. It takes absolutely no effort. This awareness, this present awareness to be certainly present, certainly aware. Another thing, too, is that this conscious certainty, which is locationless, <clears throat> excuse me, is not grounded on anything. It is not on an earth. That may be the appearance of what a body is, but anyway, it's the body that appears to be on the earth. If one's going to talk about it at all, not awareness. And so this, this ungrounded, you know, sometimes you hear, well, you've got to be grounded to be certain, to be solid. But this is way beyond that. And it's just floating as its own never-endingness. 
locationlessness, yet certain alive, effortless, buoyant, free. If any questions should come up, maybe you had some at the beginning of the talk even, you started, if you'd like answered, which we'll do. Or if any come up during the talk, based on what's been said already or what might be coming up, before asking Emerson to, if you can pose your question and, and, and get it answered, which of course is encouraged, obviously, but maybe just pause a moment and say, ask, that ask this certainty that is the one whose presence this is, if it has a question. And pretty good chance it's going to expose whatever the question might be that seems to be coming from something other than this, a wannabe other state, which isn't really real. So, in the promotional literature and things that the Nothing Conference had on their website leading up to the conference, I was looking at it from time to time. And at one point came across a statement, and I frankly can't remember all the words, but it did say something about, I think it was experiencing the beauty of the present moment. The beauty and present moment. And what did seem to be worthwhile sort of looking into a little more deeply maybe than we usually tend to is exactly what is meant by the present moment, really dialing in a little bit more. So here awareness is, And again, just this, this self-aware presence, which is, which is the, the real you, so to speak, which is itself, there's an awareness that it is, again, as we said, present. Just feel that the so-called solidity and infallibility of this, which is awareness just being. And by the way, awareness is not aware of the present, as if they were two separate things, as if the present were something that were included within awareness, or that Well, awareness and the present are just two different word labels, just labels for this infallibly here, now, not located anywhere though. And it's not trying to find itself. It, and by the way, this is never saying it is the present or that it is present. Awareness is never saying that it's awareness. It's just this. It does seem to help sometimes point things out. And so this sort of, because this is what's conscious, this is what's alive, this has to be, for want of a better way of saying, the, the premise, so to speak, of life, the perspective. All these words are wrong, as you know. Here it is. Now, and again, this is the only one that's alive. 
and conscious and aware and present. Now, it seems on a day-to-day -day basis that there's this other thing that goes on, which is functioning in time, which is the me, the personal me, the separate me. And by the way, there isn't, as I hope we'll see in, in a bit, there isn't the me and something separate called time that the me lives in. The me and time are also synonymous. The me thoughts, the thoughts of the separate self, and time are one and the same. Time is the me. Time creates the me. And just to, again, give some perspective, we'll say prior to awakening, which awareness really never has to go through, but it, it seems as if there's this functioning as a body in time and I live inside the body and that's me, my physical material world is the only world there is and this spiritual stuff is kind of ethereal and woo woo and I don't know about it. And that's reality at that point from that sort of perspective. And then, ah, there's some awakening. Oh, there's this thing called presence and stuff. There's this awareness, which is what I'm told I really am and not this bag of thoughts that goes around and sensations and phenomena that appears. And so, and I'm told I have to turn to, to experience this more fully, I have to turn to the now, to awareness. I have to turn to the present to stay free of this tug and pull of time and movement and sensation and separateness to avoid suffering and creating this sense of a separate self. And it seems like that's what we do for a while, seemingly. But, and a, a way of describing that, it's as if time were the dominant state, were, the, were the, basically the primary state, sort of where one lives, frankly. And that which is called pure awareness, self with capital S, the present, the now, amnes, is something that's experienced only periodically, for short periods. Right, we're there for a while, then we get pulled out, back and forth, back and forth. Now, in light of what was just seen a few so-called moments ago about this infallibility of present awareness, which indeed is the, the one actually living, existing, conscious being, from its perspective, what's different when, when that's the starting point and not Time and separation and movement and the personal me is the starting point of sort of, of identification and then saying, ah, I'm periodically able to be the present, be, be being, be pure awareness now. What if all that is just let go of and the, this is wrong, the, the, the beingness, the identification, so to speak, and there's no one doing the identification. It's the self it's, it's the self, self-awareness, present awareness is self-awareness that is this. And, ah, this is what's primary, dominant, the premise of life, really, really. And it never vacates this and it can't, really. Now, is this ever having to turn to itself, having to rest in itself from another state? Does it, does it have to turn to this to awaken out of something? This, which is this right now, presence? No, of course.
And so when nowness, amness, ever presentness is the premise, so to speak, where the, the this is all wrong, where the seeing is from, the, the perspective of which there really isn't one, but got to use words. When this is the so-called starting point, awareness is self present self-awareness. And this has to be the starting point because nothing else is present or aware to be a starting point. So if the, the looking is from here by no one, just awareness itself, no one has arrived here, this is it. <clears throat> but from here, and all there is is awareness, consciousness, there's no physicality anywhere. When the starting point is pure consciousness, pure awareness, and what it is as itself, what it knows itself to be, not what I think it is, the I, the personal I, thinks or knows about it, or can say accurately and put into words, that's not it, that's not it, it's this. From here, time, even what still appears to be time on a day-to-day -day basis, because we still have these bodies and gotta move around and function in time. And this is the whole reason for making this, bringing this up and making this point, is, oh, well, if from, again, as this presentness from itself, if it seems there is any kind of a turning, as we said, awareness, present awareness cannot turn to the self it already is being. And this is whole, in other words, for the only one existing. This is whole. This is it. But if one were to speak of turning, the only kind of turning there could be in this life is that, oh, I turned away from this ever-presentness that is being this self here and let attention sort of, this, this whole, it's as if this whole other secondary state starts up, kicks in, in, the, in this, the leaving of present awareness, which actually can't even really happen. But to be clear on this is a huge thing. Because you, what this makes clear is that, whoa, that if this is the premise that there's only presentness as all, then the departure from it, seemingly, is the very trigger, so to speak, that seems to create time. That creates time, all time. It's not like when abiding as this presentness, you're here, and time is off there, still going on somewhere, but it's just not getting your attention. No, this present awareness is literally all, all, all the presence there can be, that there is. So how could time have presence if only also, in addition to the present, if only the present has or is presence? Which is, again, is just another way of saying awareness, being, aliveness fresh aliveness. And so this, or rather, let's say, the, just to make it clear, the seeming wandering away from this into thought, into sensation, into whatever, literally is creating time on the spot, right then and there. And that's, it's, it's very, the, the extent to which there's this sense of separation is the very duration of time. It, that's what creates a period of time, or the period of not being your own being, consciously. And that shows that that shows where all the power is. You've got all the power, not you in a personal sense at all, but as this presentness, this is all that ex is existent, present to be any kind of power. It's not a power that can be used by another. And there isn't another that knows about it, and it doesn't even call itself power, really, it just is. But when the so-called the so mental wandering is withdrawn, and there's just an abiding, 
as living isness, infallibly again present isness. This is all that's going on. And notice too, often you hear about duality is like a subject object thing. Uh, and we tend to think of it in terms of the ego. The little me thinking about this, thinking about that. And another way of putting that, and it's really the exact same thing, is to say, to have now, which is, this is like the default way of being, now. I'm changing nowness. And by the way, what was just said, so-called back there a few moments ago about this, the, the premise being the present, present awareness. Darn it, this is what happens. You get so narrowed out, I lost the train of thought. It was there, anyway, maybe it'll come back, it usually does. But doesn't matter because all that's really present is, is this, and it doesn't need any description of anything. But this has this has no history. Oh, okay. To have this, which is, which is now, or we'll use the word now, to have now and then is duality. To have now and a then, meaning the now that just is without thought or effort, choicelessly, here it is. Now what, how, how could a then come in on top of this or in addition to this? Wouldn't it have to be a thought in terms of past or future, of yesterday or what am I going to do tomorrow? And that it isn't that the little me has those thoughts. Those thoughts are the little me, are the me, the separate one. And it's all just dreamed up by a, a dream of ignorance. Again, it takes an ignoring of amnes, presence, being, for that stuff to operate. And when there's no more ignorance, ignorance, darkness, then here it is. Ah, reality. And no. Are there any questions here? Right now, how could now have a question? It hasn't been around long enough because it's just now <clears throat> to know anything from a from before. There's, here, there's no such thing as before. That's all imaginary that there wasn't before. Look, from here, as this presence, present presence, And again, this is, this. I have to say it this way, this is primary, without this present awareness, you got nothing. No awareness of even being. And there is, as we know, a deep, like a deeper state than this, than we, the level we seem to be talking on, and we're pointing as accurately as we can, but in you know what they call deep sleep, where there isn't even any knowing of the fact that the present is present, that the awareness is ever present. There's none of that going on. There's no time, because all of that takes time to put that into words, even though they might be, from one point of view, accurate words. But it's not it. And this says, no, is this without thought? Saying there's been any prior time? No. 
And he, okay, so here awareness is, I'll say first. Now, along comes a thought, ah, this nothing conference meeting began X number of minutes ago, because I remember seeing and hearing a voice, Peter talking, and there was nobody in the chair, and he's talking about that. That happened before, that happened prior to this. And that's the one you gotta look at closely. You go, okay, wait a minute. Who's conscious, who's aware, who's being here? Awareness. And it's just present now. And it's here. And then comes the thought about earlier. So was that, was there really an event prior to this awareness that's aware of right now? You can't say that. There's no evidence of such a thing because the only so-called, what, what the thought or mind team is suggesting was a prior time is not prior at all. It's just coming up now for the first time ever. Actually, it's a false was. Awareness cannot choose to be was. Nor can it choose to be will be. And you, you be, just become so blatantly obvious that, oh, here's awareness, and these are just imaginings coming up, suggesting, trying to fool, so to speak, not like they have intelligence if they're really trying to do that, it's just how it seems to work. But no, 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 that's not back there. That's just coming up now. <clears throat> Another thing, this may be familiar, but this is a good place to mention it. Notice that right now, that there is no such thing as a thought with a history of having been thought. There's no such thing as a thought with a prior history. Said another way, you never, this is wild to the mind, you never have had a thought before. As awareness now, not a one. And not only so-called you, but no one, anywhere. Because there's only this. We have Peter back. My goodness. <laughs> oh, I'm good, Harry. Thank you. I'm talking to him. That was wild. Oh my God. Yeah, well, you, you, you disappeared, did, which is great. Did you, yeah, right. Did, did you hear me say that we had a power failure? No. Yeah, um, because I had, it's hot here today and I had the air conditioning on and then I hear uh, something from in the other room, the microwave or the <laughs> oven going beep, beep, beep. And I went, oh my God, that's a power failure. <laughs> and, and then the AC started. The thing is the, um, the battery, oh, I know what it was. The, the uh, computer has a, has a battery in it. I'm, I'm running off the, the adapter, but I think what happened is the modem went out. 
Jeez. <laughs> anyway. So no we're worries. Back. We're back. Yeah. We're back. Okay, There's we got some time too. We got some time. Yes, yes. Someone messaged that maybe the disappearance of Peter is part of Peter's production. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That, yeah. was all, that was all intentional. <laughs> that was all intentional. That was, that was, uh, you know, I, I was pl playing along with it. <laughs> so, so there's a cor question from uh, George. Locationless, okay. placeless, indeed. If you were to attempt describing how it's felt, if, if you were trying, if you, to, if you were to attempt describing how it's felt, Peter, can you attempt to describe how it felt? empty of attempts to, <laughs> I know, I understand, George, I, I get it. Um, this, is, this is a tricky one, but it's, it's empty of any attempt to analyze and therefore be able to reflect back and say, well, it was this way kind of thing. But there, there's a very sort of, clean aliveness no thought clutter uh, and a, a lot of we, we're most of us that are attending a conference of this type are I have to say it this way sort of good ways down the road down the path and there's a clarity that okay thoughts obviously are not awareness, not the self, <clears throat> but that's not all there is to it. It's like, that's maybe the first layer the, the first of, of what purports to be the localized sense of a body, of a me even. Maybe there's not much of a me left, but there still is, frankly, a sense of a body, even though it doesn't belong to anyone. And but there's a, there's a little sort of a two-ness there too, which I mean is everything from the sense of gravity to, because awareness, there's no gravity in pure being. And that, that's a, a thing that goes on between objects in space. And maybe we, could, we can say even gravity is a belief, but um, <clears throat> which in one sense it is. But It's just sort of a open, again, contentless, yet alive, aware, unattachedness, freedom, and yet there is still some stuff that seems to cling on a, you know, in a way on a deeper level. So, and it's always present now. In the minute there's a wandering off into thought or with, uh, you know, um, at one time I emailed David Godman, who's written all the books on Ramana Maharshi and the, the I thought and, you know, self-inquiry and all that. And I just wanted to clarify. And I said, this sort of, you know, uh, to whom does this arise? To me. Okay, well, who, who am I? To, to the eye, that kind of thing. And it had to do with the arising stuff. And I said, okay, much, most of the time it's not thoughts, but it's energetic type phenomena, not even the five physical senses, but just energy, uh, gloms of density sometimes or agitation or whatever. And he says, all of that goes under the category of thought, really. So I, I just toss that in there for what it's worth. <clears throat> but thank you, Peter. Just, you know. <laughs> uh, there is a couple of questions here. Um, what is Peter's personality like? Do you have any thoughts on embodiment and human desires being a part of this formless nothing awareness? Yeah. Um, I don't, I have to say it this way, but I'm, I'm not into that nihil, nihilistic, you know, you've got to negate everything that's not 
the infinite spirit, even though you, because if you're taking a negative attitude towards it, like it's bad or unspiritual, it's kind of making something out of it, even to that degree. Like, okay, I'm not there yet if I haven't risen out of this or if I'm not affected by it. So experience still happens, but, and it's, it's enjoyed. If, by the way, from the perspective of, I have to say this way, from the self, life, being, it's just itself. It's just one, and there's nothing to negate. Where there's just one, there's, there aren't opposites, so there isn't that other state to negate. And it's alive, it's joyous, it's, it's spontaneously, has no baggage, it's, so it's fresh, it's light. And that beingness is sort of what's brought to everyday living, too, as best we can. I, am I there all the time? No way. Um, especially not these days, it seems like. There's a lot of stuff trying to weigh you down. But um, if what, what I'm saying is that when there's a desire to do something, and you might say more like a, just an inclination or an impulse, it's more often than not, and I, I'm not making this personal, but I'll just say, when, when one is abiding as the self, and there aren't two, to that extent that we're being that these days, uh, even what appear as desires to go do this or do that, are really coming, it's like an impulse from the self in its uh, limitless expression of what it is. But it's, it's still definitely never that, it doesn't, because there's a de desire, it doesn't suddenly convert to a me desire or, you know, I'll say, that's why I'll say and desires usually are the me, but just an impulse to do something. It's not that, oh, all of a sudden now I'm being the me. No, no. It's still, uh, it's like they say in the Bible, the earth is the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So it's all the self glorifying itself in, ex in its limitless expression. And it's going to express. It's, it's going to, like they say, it's going to manifest one way or the other, still appear to why fight it? Why, why be anti it? So I hope that answers you. That's awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Peter. Uh, George has uh, another question. Is it fair to us that the act of attention determine our reality, either infinite, uh, either finite or infinite? Also, is there a middle ground that allows to not to lose the sight of neither? Would you like to repeat I, that? No, um, I, I get where it's coming from. I would, to that one, it seems like, and, and again, don't think of these answers as coming from, take, that's a good one. I'll say what I'm going to say, but that is a very good one to sort of take into meditation in the awareness that, okay, all that's really here is the self. Now, what would it have to say about that? And then don't try to know anything, just be still and see what, because that, that, that which has the quote unquote answer, even at this sort of relative stage of the game, is right there where the George body and experience appears to be. But, um, and, and that's, I, I would say, just sort of keep it as, because this is the infinite self's consciousness and life and being to begin with, in the first place, then to the extent one can, you fall down many times a day seemingly, it, it, just you know, bring it back in, in the awareness too that there is really no secondary me who can put its attention on awareness or off awareness, who has a choice to, to act as awareness or not act as it. It's just awareness, being that fast, done. That's, that's always like the, the real answer. And then go about your business and just try to, um, I have to say try, that sounds like a, something another self is doing. Just be alert to the uh, ever presence of aliveness. If, if you want a, a bit of an anchor, and that's all wrong, but let it be not 
thinking accurately about truth and is this a good non-dual thought I'm having now? Is this consistent? Drop all that stuff and just be consciously alive. And that's not you doing that because you don't put conscious aliveness here personally, nor do I. Here it is. We don't, we don't know how to do that, make it be present, but here it is. And that is the self. This is the self being itself. So you're, you know, good there. Peter, there's a, a lot of terms right now that's being used. There's consciousness, there's awareness, yeah. there's happening, aliveness, um, so many, so many <laughs> different. Can you sum up kind of like what's happening with all of these different words kind of like coming up? You know, all of a sudden, um, consciousness is, is, uh, is, yeah, talk about that a little bit of the wording. Because we're trying to word something that's indescribable. And, um, but there's so many different words that come out from, <laughs> yeah, from this you're aliveness. Not, you're not kidding. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're good for, as we say, the pointers. Uh, I would say just within ev every body, so-called, is going to have different, attached different meanings to them, seemingly. It's just the way it seems to be on that level. And that's why you're sort of always safe, that's not good, but, uh, in just being still and being silent and letting it live what it is, excuse me, where there appears to be a, a body, you. So, um, you know, consciousness, for example, when, when writing consciousness is all, I got, I had to deal with that. And I had never given it any thought or consideration. And what came up was a way of, oh, wait a minute, okay, all this seeing and touching and hearing is which in, from the normal human material physical perspective if that's not going on if i'm not seeing hearing tasting touching smelling thinking feeling emotions i'm unconscious so consciousness has gone away somewhere and we would say no it hasn't and so a a way of referring to that state came up is just that's human sensory consciousness other it's also called you know the body mind and it's all one thing sort of that it all has in common and and the the good way to sort of have a, a way to be clear about this if you are going to think about it is to ask the question is it finite or is it infinite because human sensory consciousness is all dealing in different types of forms, visual forms, auditory forms, taste forms, or colors, you know, olfactory sounds, the whole bit, tactile feeling. The form of uh, going like this with the fingers is different from if I were to put them up against a snowball right now. Those are, those are two very different tactile forms, but they're very distinct. And they involve something objective and observable, takes time. Whereas in infinity, none of that is going on. Your book, Consciousness is All, we talked about this before, but I just want you to share that because it's like a 30-hour mega audiobook. Um, yes. And that yeah. was... <laughs> And when I was when I was an explorer, you know, like maybe I don't know how many years ago, I would listen to it. I'm like, whoa, what is this? So can you tell us the the uh, uh, the expression or how did that happen? The 30 hour audiobook compared to the book. Yeah, um, well, the book is a long book to begin with because the written book. Because in the writing of it, at first it seemed like okay, you know bang this out in six months, no problem. When these few basic core points came uh, on which to base the book. And then as it got going, it was like, all these questions came up and it's like this anticipation of all these questions. And you gotta deal with this. You can't sweep that under the rug. You gotta answer that, you gotta deal with it. 
And so in the dealing with all the stuff that came up, that's how it got to be a long book. And then <clears throat> at one point after it was published, thought came to, this was before the days of audible.com or they were in their infancy, but uh, thought came to make an audio book out of it. And I was just gonna sell on my website. I had no intention of selling, you know, putting it on audible or anything. So uh, I started doing that and I thought, and I don't know, it's just thanks to awareness, limitlessness, this thought floated in, oh, you've heard some books before and they're, they can be kind of dry sometimes. Why not let this be reading from the text? Yes, but also leave room for any extra spontaneous commentary that might come up in the moment because that's the nature of, of the self. It's, sponta it's spontaneous. It doesn't have anything planned or, you know, and there's no planning, nothing rehearsed, nothing laid out, no pattern. So, um, that's what led to doing that, and that's how it got so long with all the talk. You said you're planning to do kind of like a, um, a new version of it with a new introduction. Can you share more of that? Yeah. Um, yes, and by the way, if anybody, I'm not trying to sell books here, I'm not, but it should be out in about two weeks on Amazon. Don't, it, it will be the, the new version will be the fourth revised edition. If you see the Amazon right now, they, or booksellers, they still have the third. But in about two weeks, it'll be, at least it'll be on Amazon. And then it'll start to get into the pipeline if you like to go to physical bookstores instead. But um, one of the things that came up is that one of the reasons for making the revisions in the book, which weren't a lot, except for the introduction, uh, was that that thing was first published in 2006. And the spiritual landscape seemingly you have to talk in terms of time now today is very different from then and so it needed some updating and people who will come to the book in 2020 are going to be for, to some extent in a very different place than someone coming to it in 2006 so i wanted it to reflect that and another uh thing that just came very forcibly was look Get the reader started off on the right foot because really the only reader is awareness and consciousness. And it's not located inside a body. And one thing that was kind of a jolt at first, like, my God, I didn't even realize that. But when we are taught to read, chances are you think you're a human being, you're, you're in the body. And so when, and you're trained from that when you're, whenever you start to read first grade or kindergarten, whatever it is. And the reading is done as if there's a you sitting inside the body somewhere, looking out from those eyes, and the reading is happening. And that's how it's done. And what the introduction walks you through is, ooh, let's try a new way of experience on the book. And it basically, it talks a little bit about how to read as non-local awareness, all-inclusive, all-embracing awareness, um, the spaciousness of that. And uh, also to, be, to read the book as if it were written by the self, not Peter Jubin, because it gives it, the meaning is totally different how the book comes across that way. And that same self is the one that's conscious right there as it is being read. There's only the one. So it's like it's talking to itself. But when, when I was reading that, I was just into this desperate seeking exploration mode. Um, and, and I think I was going through so much at that time. And then um, I think, I, I, think I, I told you this, that I, that I just listened to it two days straight because it's 30 hours. Yeah. Oh <laughs> and God. then at, at, one point, <laughs> at one point, I was like, where is this voice coming from? You know, because you're listening to it for so long. And, you know, where does the voice end and where does the voice begin? Wow. Yeah, That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think, and I think that was just a really free flow. You know, we're just kind of like, it, it felt like a free flowing of, 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 um, of just words coming out. Uh huh. It, yeah. It was, there, there was none of that uh, planned at all. What I did, I would read whatever chapter I was going to record that day. I did about one a day. 
and whatever chapter I was going to record, I did read it beforehand just to refresh a little bit so I wouldn't be stuttering constantly while having to do the actual reading part too. But then, um, you know, just by virtue of having done that, in infinite intelligence comes up with stuff and it just seems to be appropriate at that point in, uh, in the book. I wish we could spend more time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, you know what we should do? We should do because there's some people here that, you know, that I came only here for, for, for uh, Peter. And uh, there's a person that um, wanted to just, just came for the conference just to, uh, to, uh, oh my to gosh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, so why you. don't we, but why don't we, let's, let's, why don't we do adjustment to that? They came, yeah. they came for themselves. Yes. Capital S. That's right. They came for themselves. Uh, let's do another Zoom. Maybe we'll invite people to, to come in. I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, just because uh, it, was, it was flowing really, really beautiful. I'm like, and you disappeared, which is great, too. Yeah. <laughs> that was bizarre. Uh, <laughs> that was wonder, perfect. <laughs> and no, you know, usually it's when there's like a thunderstorm or something. Yeah, yeah. But just. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Peter. Okay. Uh, we'll do this again really soon. Thank we apologize you. for yeah. that glitch. Um, oh no, that was that was my bad on on my end entirely. Uh, <laughs> okay. Whatever. But yeah, and yeah, we'll we'll thanks. do another Zoom. We'll do another okay. Zoom. Thanks, thanks very much, Emerson, to you and Noel and Harry and everyone. The other, I don't remember all the names behind the scenes, but just a huge thank you to all of you, and also to all of you, uh, so-called. We're just the same one, really. Um, There's who, uh, who are participating. Thank, thanks for taking the time to be here for this today. It's really much appreciated. Thank you so much, Peter. There's just a couple of comments here. There's a wonderful sense of relief in this. Thank you, Peter, from Ishwara. Oh, and okay. uh, Mark wants to know the title of this book again. Please, Consciousness is All. Yes. Right. Uh, actually, I ch when the revision, I changed the subtitle, too. To it's consciousness is all, and the subtitle for the new version is The Magnificent Truth of What You Are. There you go. And then there's uh, uh, George, yes, another Zoom. So um, ah, we'll do this again. Okay. We'll do this again because I think what happened is what some people, you know, um, went to the other stage and then might have missed yeah. some, of, some, of, the, uh, some uh, of what you're talking about. There's tons of people actually that got tickets, and I think what they're doing is they're watching it again. Um, not oh, watching right now, yes. and then they'll probably watch it later. And then so yeah. we, we'll, we'll do it if, if you're okay, okay with that. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, Thank you I'm, so much, everyone. Okay. You got to go. Okay. No, no, Thank no, no, you go too. ahead. Go no, ahead no, if you want to say something. That's it. That's <laughs> it. I'll, I'll watch it later because I'm curious. I think I was continued talking unaware that you, because I wasn't looking at the camera at that point. I was behind yeah. the camera. And uh, I just kept going. And I think some juicy stuff got left out. But whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um